So let's uh, to ask Twitter a simple question about uh, the codename one account. So this button ask, and here we already have a dest container. So that is all well. Let's go and create an event in the code and go to itself. Where we action. Now Twitter has this web service where you have a search query and you can ask uh, about details about a specific account. So let's first invoke that particular service. So we'll start by creating a connection request and we just create a match. And we can add an argument. In this particular case, it's Q. And the value is at codename1. Now, you'll notice I don't encode anything. And I don't do anything with that regard. It's automatic. The argument includes the at symbol and the other symbol encoded appropriately. What I do need to do is set post to false now notice that I'm placing this statement before this statement which is crucial uh, otherwise you'll get an exception and the reason you'll get an exception is that arguments added to post differ from arguments added to get that's important so that just works as is I just need to send this request to the server so let's manager get instance and add to Q and that's it that will perform the request now that's not very useful for me. I want to do things like show a progress indicator I want to block and actually process the request afterwards so uh, the simplest uh, way of doing this is add to Q and wait which will essentially wait until I get a response and in order to make the wait not so boring we'll add an animation so uh, we'll use the pro the infinite uh, progress class and we'll instantiate it and then show infinite blocking dialog that just essentially shows the dialog now the cool thing is I can just do set this code on the and give it the dialog so what this does is this will show a uh, progress dialog that never ends uh, looping and uh, this will cause the request to dispose that dialog when it's finished so the dialog will appear and then after this completes it will disappear and all would be well so now we got back a response we can easily extract it by getting the response data as a byte array we can alternatively override the response uh, class, uh, the connection request, and override some methods in it. Uh, either way, uh, whichever whichever works best for you, uh, I'll actually override it. Yeah. And if I override it, then I don't need to wait. And in the case, this should work just as well. So let's override. And let's use a nice which allows us to override methods. So I'll override several methods. The first one is uh, the read response, which is and this will return the actual response of the data. We can read the headers, we can read everything. And the second is the post response, which is very important too. Now, why do we need to override both? Post response happens after the read response method and it happens on the EDT so if we want to update things we we need to do it here the read response doesn't happen on the EDT so we can do uh, everything we can read and process and parse and everything right here so let's do the actual JSON parsing here so we'll use uh, the JSON parser and just uh, parse. Now, parse needs a reader, so we'll use the input stream reader. And the actual input. Now, 
you'll notice I don't need to close any stream or anything. Everything is cleaned up for me automatically. It's not just me being negligible here. Uh, Codename One automatically closes all the streams for you. You don't need to worry about them. We're we're fine there. So now I have a hash table containing all my JSON data, and I can just print this parse data. So in this particular case, I'll just print it out, and we can work with it uh, later on if we want to. So you can actually go over the hash table of the parse data and extract anything you want from there. But in this case, I want to be it to be as simple as possible. I'll just print the hash table. In the post response, I can actually do stuff. So I'll store the hash table rather than. And now, if I want to update it, I can do that update right from here. So I can actually make the component final and then use find this like this and give it the component and then just add anything I want to it. So for instance for we'll we'll handle it once we understand that everything is working properly. One thing here and that's kind of important it's to set the URL which also needs to be relatively high up. So once I've done that, let's try that and see how it's working on the simulator. So before I actually run this, let's open the network monitor tool, which allows me to see everything that goes in and out of uh, the simulator. So let's ask Twitter, and as you can see, a request was sent, there was a progress here, and there was a request, not very interesting, that's just a request, and there should be, and there's a response right here, so you see the request, request data, the headers that were sent, and the response data, which you can see right here, this is actually the JSON returned by Twitter, and their response headers. Here you can actually see the JSON after the parsing. So let's say I want to just extract one entry from here and uh, see how it goes. So the first entry is really uh, a vector of sort uh, containing all uh, hash table, sorry, containing all sorts of data. So let's do h get and uh, extract, uh, say, results per page. And then add this as a label into the desk. better yet like that so now let's revalidate after that so Z get component form revalidate so that should be great and now this is no longer necessary and as you can see we get the 15 that we had in the results previously so I hope this taught you a bit about uh, how to work with JSON and web services. It's very similar with XML and the XML parser as well. You can pretty easily uh, send requests to a web service and get a response back. So thanks for watch watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.